Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Saturday was World Water Day, and the United Nations estimates close to one and a half billion people around the world do not have access to clean drinking water. What about here in the United States? Antiepileptics were found in drinking water of Southern California. A sex hormone was found in San Francisco's water. Three medications and an antibiotic were found in the water supply of Tucson, Arizona. And a mood stabilizer was found in the water of New Jersey. And that's just to name a few. The Associated Press has conducted an extensive investigation into the drinking water in at least 24 major American cities across the country, which contain trace amounts of a wide array of pharmaceuticals. The amounts might be small, but scientists are worried about the long-term health and environmental consequences of their presence in the water supplies of some 41 million Americans. The five-month investigation of 62 metropolitan areas and 51 smaller cities found many drinking water water suppliers, including bottled water companies, do not even test for the presence of drugs in the water. The utilities that do test for drugs often don't tell customers about the trace amounts of medications in their water. Jeff Don is a national writer for the Associated Press and one of the reporters who led this investigation. He joins us now from Boston. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Jeff. Thanks a lot, Amy. Good morning. It's good to have you with us. Well, why don't you start off um, why you it conducted this extensive five-month investigation. What tipped you off? We were aware that there was some research, uh, mostly in specialized technical journals, scientific journals, suggesting that there was this uh, group of uh, emerging contaminants, and one of the contaminants of most concern were uh, pharmaceuticals in very low amounts. They've only been able to measure these kinds of pharmaceuticals well in the last 10 years or so. And we also were wondering, I'm a former medical writer, we were also wondering about pharmaceuticals in particular as a contaminant because as opposed to traditional contaminants that you find in the water, pharmaceuticals are actually designed to interact with your body. So we wondered if that would pose special concerns and special problems. So. How did you conduct the investigation? How did you find out what's in the water supply? Essentially, we did two things. We checked scientific research, surveys that have been done already that appeared in a variety of scientific journals. And then we did our own survey, and that's what you were referring to earlier in your introduction. We surveyed 62 large water utilities. Those are the people who bring drinking water to your homes and businesses. We also called 51, 52 other smaller utilities, utilities in smaller cities. And we essentially asked them, what's been detected in your water? What kind of pharmaceuticals have been detected? And how do you treat your water? And does it cleanse your water of these pharmaceuticals? So who tests and who doesn't? It seems like it broke into three categories. Some test and no, some cities. Uh, some simply don't t test for drugs. And some do test and don't reveal it. That's right. About roughly half do test. And that was somewhat of a surprise. That really wasn't known before because, like I said a moment ago, these, pharm these pharmaceuticals in the water are contaminants that people weren't very well aware of and that have barely been reported on uh, at all to, for the general public. Um, it turns out that about half of the utilities either uh, have tested themselves or n are aware that someone else has tested the USGS and other agencies, health departments also do some testing. And the vast majority that tested did find some pharmaceuticals in their water in these very low trace amounts. So let's talk about some of the examples. Uh, New York, traces of sedatives. Uh, Philadelphia, 56 drugs in the water. Denver, unspecified antibiotics. Las Vegas, I don't think I can even um, pronounce all of these drugs. Long Beach, California, unspecified drugs. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky, ibuprofen. Uh, Milwaukee, um, one drug. Minneapolis, um, three. Talk about what you found uh, the most surprising and go through the country, if you will. Well, there's what I think what's most surprising is the range of drugs that are found 
and how widely dispersed these drugs are. It's not, you might think it's just in the Northeast or it's just in California, it's just in population centers. That's not true. Um, there were uh, places in the, in the Midwest that, where these kinds of drugs were found at all. There were some uh, relatively less populated places than other places where these drugs were found as well. That's somewhat surprising. The range of drugs is somewhat surprising. Like you said, it's psychiatric medications. It's the antibiotics. It's let's pain talk relievers. about let's talk about the psychiatric medications. Um, where well, there, did you find them? There are. Um, the, um, one of the most common ones, carbamazepine, is used as a mood stabilizer and an anti-epileptic medication as well. And carbamazepine is found all over the country in these trace amounts. So How does it get into the water supply? That's a, that's a great question. Um, these pharmaceuticals enter the water supply. Mainly, it would appear through you, me, and everybody else, through homes, through hospitals, through nursing homes, when we take a medication, when we take medicine because we're sick, some of that medicine is absorbed by our bodies and some of it passes right through our bodies. The relative share depends on the medication, but not all the medication is absorbed. So when you leave the bathroom, that medication enters into the waste stream. It goes through water treatment plants. Treatment plants are not designed to cleanse, conventional treatment at least, is not designed to cleanse all these pharmaceuticals. And some of them pass through, and some of these wastewater treatment plants are commonly upstream of your drinking water intakes all across the country. And those pharmaceuticals pass into the drinking water. Drinking water treatment in conventional form does not entirely cleanse them from the, the water stream, and they end up in varying degrees uh, in our taps. So it can either be through human waste, or you could be, for example, dumping this into the toilet. Is that right? You could be emptying your medicine cabinet, for example. You're exactly right. That's a whole other avenue by which pharmaceuticals enter the water stream. For years, people were told and often told each other that if you had a medicine that expired or you didn't need for some reason, you didn't take for some reason, dump it in the toilet so no one else can get at it. You know that it'll be, it'll be gone, but out of sight and out of mind. But it turns out that that also contributes to these contaminants being in our water. Um, since February of 2007, the federal government for the first time has put out guidelines for consumers, regular people like us, that with the exception of a small number of medications that are particularly sensitive, generally the federal government now is asking people not to do that any longer. Instead, to mix those medicines with something unsavory so pets or children don't get at it, uh, coffee grounds, cat litter, something like that, and to put it in a bag and to throw it in your regular garbage. What happens to it then is another question, but at least it doesn't directly and immediately enter the water stream. What about that? What about when it's put in landfill and how it leaches into, if it leaches into water there? That's the problem. There's not really um, much study of exactly how that process is occurring, but the scientists we talk to presume that to some degree it is possible, of course, that some of that pharmaceutical residue then will leach, as you say, from, uh, from waste areas, from landfills, from dumps, and eventually end up back in the groundwater. And there is research, by the way, that shows that these low amounts of pharmaceuticals do end up are capable of ending up in aquifers, in the underground groundwater, and not just in streams and, and rivers and surface waters. Jeff Dunn, when we come back from break, I want to ask you, even if these are trace amounts of these drugs or combinations of lots of them, 
Uh, how does it affect us? And also want to ask about the veterinary medicine, the steroids that are given to cows and how they uh, get into our water supply. Jeff Dunn is Associated Press national writer, co-author of this major investigation into pharmaceuticals in our drinking water. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We'll be back in a minute. Choke it down. Zona marginal, detalle internacional. Ey, pife, ey, pife. La guerra soy las mueve, los pozos petroleros que tienen patas arriba en el mundo entero. Mi pregunta es qué pasará después. Cuando se acabe el agua se pelearán otra vez y el imperio diga 